Now, we've looked at self-discipline, self-control as a biblical qualification for an elder. And it's a qualification for successful Christian living, victorious Christian living, uh, to increase your knowledge of the scripture, your prayer life. It affects all parts of your, your Christian uh, experience. And may I say it affects your marriage and your children, your disciplines. So it's one of these virtues that just covers all of life. Now, I want to just look at a few key steps to help cultivate a self-disciplined life. Later, we'll look at very practical um, ways to organize life. But these are some general principles that will help you. So number one, make a conscious decision to be a self-disciplined person. Rhonda Kelly, in her book, writes this. Each person chooses to be controlled or uncontrolled in thinking and living. But the first step is a personal decision to be disciplined. Maybe you didn't learn this discipline as a child. Maybe your parents weren't concerned about it. Still, you can learn to develop discipline in your life. God wants you to. But first, you must have to acknowledge the problem and then be willing to do something about it. My dear friends, let me assure you, you can learn to be more self-disciplined. It will take time, and it will take effort, and you have to stay with it all your life, even into old age. This is not something that you conquer once in life. E even though I feel I'm a disciplined person, I still have to readdress this issue when I find myself acting in an undisciplined way or, or losing discipline. But remember, you have the Holy Spirit of God within you to teach you and to help you. So you are not alone in this battle for self-control. And you have the body of Christ and friends to help you. But first decide that you are not going to be living a chaotic, disorganized, undisciplined life any longer. By God's grace, you can bring greater order and discipline to every aspect of your life to your time, to your money, to your body, to your talents. You must decide. Second, pray consistently and persistently about developing greater self-control. Remember this, the Holy Spirit wants to produce this lovely virtue in every one of God's children. Therefore, we can pray regularly, even daily, that God will help us to improve in self-discipline. It's his fruit that he wants to develop within us. Don't give up persevere in pursuing this fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said this, and it's a verse that comes to my mind often. Luke 18, 1. Men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Ought always to pray and not lose heart. You can be sure that it is God's will that you be a self-disciplined person, self-controlled person, and not uncontrolled or undisciplined. So one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is to pray about this matter daily. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. Seek God's grace and help to be a self-controlled, self-disciplined person. This issue affects every area of your life. Third, start small and achieve small victories first. Now, the people who climb Mount Everest don't start out by buying a bunch of gear and hiking Mount Everest. Those people wouldn't even get to the base of the mountain. Before you climb Mount Everest, you start running, and then you do small hills, and then you do mountains, and then you do tough mountains, and then difficult mountains, and then finally you climb Mount Everest. By the way, a young man in our church climbed Mount Everest. Aren't you glad I didn't go with him because I wouldn't be here to be your teacher? This is something that only a young man can do. Now, the same thing is true in developing a life of self-discipline. You have to cultivate this by starting small, starting with little victories and then moving on to bigger victories. So let's get really practical now. Start with your room. Start with your car. Start with your desk. I remember once getting into the car of a man who was a well-known speaker and author. You may even know his name if I were to mention it. And I got into his car, and when I got into his car, I had to sit with my knees up like this because he had so many um, pieces of junk and boxes and coffee cups just piled on the floor that he needed to clean. In fact, I even asked him, I'll help you clean this car out. You just start with your car. 
or start every day just picking up your room, making your bed. Or if you're a person that uses a desk a lot like I do, keep your desk clean. Keep, have another area where you put things, but you, you, it will help you organize your brain and your life. So start there, start where you live daily and require this of yourself. Uh, be a little demanding of yourself, push yourself a little bit. When you fall down, pick yourself up again, get started again. Everyone fails, everyone starts and then they fail but you get going again. You need to know this is a lifelong process. So don't get discouraged. Keep praying, keep trying. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. People are around you to help you. Call on their, on their help. Now four, stop procrastination before it stops you. Now, the word procrastination conveys the negative concept of regularly pushing off one's responsibilities and duties and postponing something that should be done now until later. It's a very bad habit and it's a hard habit to conquer. Procrastination is evidence of a lack of self-control and an undisciplined life. Pressures and emotions take control of the procrastinator, preventing one from doing what needs to be done at the time it should be done. If you're a shepherd of God's people and you are a procrastinator, you will frustrate your fellow elders and the people you are working with in your church. When you procrastinate, you end up producing a very poor quality of work in the last minutes, or you don't accomplish the task at all. Dear friends, it is a serious problem and you will frustrate the people around you. You will frustrate your spouse, your children, and your church body. Procrastination hurts relationships. According to uh, a biblical qualifications for an elder, he needs to manage his own home well. Well, you can't manage your home well if you're a procrastinator. In fact, you're gonna frustrate your home. You're not gonna get to your duties. Procrastination, I believe, at times is sin. So confess it when you procrastinate on divine duties you have been given, Acts 20, 28. You are hurting people who are relying on you. You're a very poor example to others. So get help from others who have conquered the vice of procrastination. Start now. Be tough on yourself. Don't tolerate this vice another minute in your life. Confess it to the Lord. Get on your knees. Your character and your public reputation are at stake. Five, have someone hold you accountable. If you are struggling with self-discipline or managing your time, have someone hold you accountable. Ask a fellow elder, ask your spouse, or someone who will help you manage your life. Uh, get better organized. Learn the skills of good stewardship so you don't damage your character and your reputation. And also have time, you'll also have time for important things like Bible reading, prayer, your family, other believers, proper rest. In our next lesson, we will present practical suggestions for organizing and ordering your life, which are very practical and will help you.